As mentioned in module 6.0, the skeletal system includes the bones of the skeleton, the cartilages, joints, ligaments, and other connective tissues that stabilize or connect the bones. Given the substantial diversity of these structures, it is not surprising that the skeletal system performs diverse functions. Keep in mind that not all structures of the skeletal system are able to perform each of these functions, but that as a system, these functions are provided by specific members of the system. Given all the organs that belong to the skeletal system, as a whole, it is able to perform the five following functions. 1. Support. 2. Storage of minerals and lipids. 3. Blood cell production. 4. Protection. And 5. Leverage. Let's look at each of these in order. One, support. The skeletal system provides structural support for the entire body. Let's specify separately the role of bones, the role of ligaments, and the role of tendons in terms of their function of providing support. Individual bones or groups of bones, for example, provide a framework for the attachment of soft tissues and organs. When it comes to ligaments, ligaments often connect two bones together, most notably in the joints. The ligaments act like strong, firmly attached bands that stabilize a joint and or hold the ends of the articulating bones together. Because of ligaments, the bones at the joint do not twist or move too far away from each other, which would lead to dislocation. Tendons, on the other hand, connect muscles to bone. 2. Storage of minerals and lipids. Bone matrix, or osteoid, is made from calcium salts and phosphate, called hydroxyapatite. The calcium salts of bone serve as a valuable mineral reserve that maintains normal concentrations of calcium and phosphate ions in the body fluids. Thus, for example, when blood calcium levels drop too low, the bone matrix can be broken down to release calcium into circulation. This results in returning blood calcium levels to normal. Conversely, when blood calcium levels are elevated, the excess calcium can be removed from the blood and deposited into new bone matrix. Thus, the bone matrix quite literally serves as a place to store and retrieve certain minerals, such as calcium and phosphate, whose stores can be drawn upon when needed. Moreover, as we will see in upcoming modules, the tissue comprising the center of large bones is called bone marrow. There are two basic types of bone marrow, namely, red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. At birth, all bone marrow is red. As we develop and mature, some red bone marrow is converted to yellow bone marrow. The color of yellow bone marrow is due to the high number of fat cells found therein. Thus, the skeleton not only stores minerals in its extracellular matrix, but also lipid energy reserves in yellow bone marrow. 3. Blood cell production. Red blood cells, platelets, and most white blood cells are produced within the red bone marrow, although some white blood cells are produced in yellow bone marrow. Red bone marrow is found mainly in flat bones, such as hip bones, the breast bone, the skull, ribs, vertebrae, and shoulder blades, and in the spongy bone at the proximal end of the long bones, namely the femur and humerus. 4. Protection. Skeletal structures surround many soft tissues and organs. The ribs, or costals, protect the organs of the thoracic cavity, namely the heart and lungs. The skull encloses the brain. The vertebrae shield the spinal cord and the pelvis cradle's delicate visceral digestive and reproductive organs. 5. Leverage. Many bones function as levers that change the size and direction of the forces generated by skeletal muscles. While skeletal muscles drive these actions, it is actually their connection to the skeleton via tendons that create the leverage. Thus, both tendons and bones are important for the leverage generated by the skeletal system. The checkpoint slide at the end of module 6.1 asks only one question. Name the five primary functions of the skeletal system. As important as this question is, I have a deeper, more probing question to ask, and it is one that we have answered in module 6.1. Beyond merely listing the five functions of the skeletal system, 
can you explain which structures of the skeletal system perform the aforementioned functions and how, or in what way, do they carry out these functions? Join me next in Module 6.2 as we discuss the classification of bones by their shape and structure.